<laughs> I've ever had. But we'll fill you in, okay? But God's good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, how are we doing, Alex? You about ready, buddy? Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, and when we turn it, I want you to just go for it, all right? Amen. Okay. <laughs> good to have you, Brother Tim. Praise the Lord. All right, one. Well, praise the Lord, and welcome to Church of the Valley. And we're going to have a glorious day, glorious service, good things going on. Hallelujah. You know, one little nugget I've got to leave with you. This week I had something inspiring kind of pick up my spirit. And I heard a brother, a young fella, he's with this, um, they call it uh, Evolu Elevation Church. <laughs> That, I like that, you know, let's get higher. And uh, he said this. He said, so many people everywhere, they're all saying, boy, I want to get back to normal. Can we get back to normal? You know, and that's been the people's heart. But he said, the Lord reminded him, said, listen, there's nothing normal about me. <laughs> He said, there, that's behind us, you see. He said, look, Jesus was born of a virgin. Amen. That wasn't normal. He said, everything God does is not normal. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so what we need to do is look for the new normal. And boy, I grabbed a hold of that one. I said, me too. I want to look for the new normal, the new one. And the scripture says it's new every morning. It's right. new every morning. And so our normal is really super normal. <laughs> our normal is like supernatural normal. That's what's normal for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you Amen. praise the yes. Lord, church? Amen. Amen. It's a glorious thought. And uh, those of you dialing in, uh, grab a hold of that. Listen, pass that around. Tell people, listen, we're not going back to the old normal. <laughs> we'll never see that kind of normal again. We got new normal that's so much better. Hallelujah. And the Lord fixes everything, every situation. And so our normal is to just rejoice in the Lord and see victory. Every day as we walk forward, oh, hallelujah. Well, boy, I'm getting excited. And here I've had a weird day, a weird time myself. I'll tell you more later. But welcome. Glory to God. We're going to have a great day. And uh, we've got Brother Dale Strand here. It's going to be special. We're excited. Roxanne, uh, we're going to need you to send the boss in a minute. But let's pray. Father in heaven. We come before you, we thank you for this great day, the day that you have made, and we rejoice in it. Hallelujah. And we are asking you now to take this day and show us new things. Bring forth your spirit to minister to us in every area. Those watching from afar, Lord, let this minister to them. May they be able to drink in and take it. I know we're separated by circumstances, but we're not separated in you. Hallelujah. We can be together in spirit, Lord, because we have one Lord. We have one spirit. And we rejoice and we unite in Jesus' name. So bless every part of the service. And we put it in your hands. In Jesus' name, Roxanne. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. I love that. Come on, um, brother Tim Moon. We all stand. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of Glory, the King of 
amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy.
struck wonder at the mention of your name. what Pastor Mike said earlier by getting back to normal when I was a much younger man I saw that verse in the Bible that says you shall be a peculiar people and I kind of lived up to that so <laughs> amen and um, I think we are to be a peculiar people amongst this crazy world we live in so um, I heard they had a great time out in San Francisco yesterday and we're going to be out there again next Saturday and um, so I'm bringing a couple friends with me and some that I haven't asked yet. But I'm, and um, anyway, but I'm hoping that they'll show up and be a blessing to the people on the streets of San Francisco. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes.
Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Tim. Always blesses us with such wonderful music. So glad everyone's here today. This is a special day, really, when you think about it. The goodness of the Lord. So as we now move our hearts toward uh, praying for some of the needs we want to of course remember uh, Gloria uh, Galtman you know and the whole family they're all you know gathering now because they're beautiful little sweet mama uh, Georgia <laughs> and uh, she's gone on home now they said this morning early, 
she just slipped away. <laughs> and uh, so there's some rejoicing going on in heaven, but it leaves heavy hearts to say goodbye. But what a testimony, what a testimony that Georgia left us. And so as we pray at this moment, we're going to pray for some of these needs as well as we uh, move into this. And uh, But I was also noticing and looking back to see Mary is here with Richard. <laughs> wow! We've been hoping and praying and asking God to work that out so that that could happen. And look at what happened today. So, boy, we're rejoicing over that. So good to see you guys. And uh, But let's just uh, pray now and ask the Lord for a, a blessing, a touch, a comfort over uh, Gloria and the family as well as other needs. Father in heaven, we know that our prayers do avail they avail much. And so we bring our needs to you. And we ask you, oh, Father God, you said, uh, pray thy will be done as it is in heaven on earth. And we believe in you for that and seeing that. And I, I pray, Lord, for every one of these situations, especially Gloria, and uh, all the family. And uh, we just ask, Lord, that you'll minister to Mary and uh, Richard, too, in a special way. We rejoice over the fact that it worked out. They actually got to be in service. And that is a blessing. And we ask you, Lord, to just minister in a special way to them. I believe you got special plans for us today as things have uh, been different this week, but you are here. And I am praying that you'll continue, Lord, to superintend and oversee and bring what needs to be into play. And we thank you for it. So now, Lord, we just leave these things to you and we ask you to continue, Lord, to enrich us, fill us, and let us, Lord, rise, hallelujah, rise in you today. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Boy, it's good to see uh, Brother Larry, George said, here. He was out because he had some issues he's dealing with and a bad foot there that but I guess it's gain, you're gaining on it a little and getting there and praise the Lord, here we are. And the other thing is, you know, some of you have heard and some of you didn't know, but um, boy, your pastor, I had a weirdness. <laughs> you know, last Sunday morning, I woke up and I couldn't hear on this side. And I had funny kind of feelings and little pain in this side. So I, uh, I didn't realize this, I couldn't hear. Until I, I tried putting on the hearing aid and it's like, hey, something wrong with this thing. It's not working. And then all of a sudden I snapped my finger and I went, wait a minute. I can't even hear anything out of it. It's just like gone. Very strange because I've been used to stereo. <laughs> See, I like stereo. <laughs> but I've been on mono now. And then... It got worse on, I came to church, remember? I came on anyway. We had good service. It worked out so that Claudia could speak. I think that was all order to the Lord, you see, in a way we didn't know. But I wasn't feeling a little good on Friday and Saturday, and she got into town, and I said, I know you're supposed to speak the following Sunday, but could you speak today to, for, I mean, Sunday? She said, well, of course, Pastor. So it got worked out so that she did speak then on monday she got to go and pastor ron helped her and they went all the way up to where neva is fairfield and they got to spend a day with neva and it was uh, what a joy because that was one of the goals 
You see, Claudia had for coming. She said, I've got to see her. I've got to go see her. And it worked out so that she could go. Well, then the next day, they found out there was a situation back at home. It's one of those kind of odd deals. But her little doggy that she loves, Bella, got very sick and had to go into the emergency, the veterinarian, and look, didn't look good. And the sad thing is, see, they lost their other little sweet puppy about a couple of months ago. And she's still feeling bad about that. Now, they got this. And she asked, can I just go back? I need to go home. And she says, you know, I really feel like I have to be there. And I told her, I says, Claudia, by all means, please, you go ahead and do what you got to do. Because I said to myself, I didn't tell her, but I said, you know, with this going on, her mind would be back there, see what I mean, to try to get up and speak or something, and, and that's what's in her heart. So I said, well, you go ahead. The Lord knows what to do. And Brother Ron says, okay, I'll step up. Now, I can't believe the events, okay? Then he finds out that he has been exposed to, to the virus by somebody. And so he said, oh, man, he said, I, I'm sorry, Pastor, I had better not come speak. He said, I've been exposed. I've got to get a test first. So I said, oh, of course, by all means, because we protect our people first. So the Lord will work it out. Don't, don't worry about it. So anyway, um, he went and did get the test he found a place he could go on Saturday, and he had to go over to Watsonville, uh, CVS, and they were doing it. So he got the test, but they won't know the results, you see what I mean? So we got to wait and see. So anyway, he did get tested, praise the Lord. He's not having any symptoms. That's the thing. So um, I told him, well, praise the Lord. The Lord will work it out. And then I was able to get contact with Brother Dale Strand. See, I went and I tried to get a hold of Pastor Mark. I want you to know all these little things is going on. And Pastor Mark was out of town. <laughs> so I go, oh my, you know, he's out of town. So then who else do I talk to? So it was going to be between Brother Dale and checking with Brother Toby. See what I mean? Pastor Toby might have been able to do it. But then I was able to make contact with Dale. And I said, well, how about it? And he said, well, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get something together. And I know him. He's, he's a deep well. I mean, he's got so much in the reservoir. And I said, God is going to use you to bring the word that, we need and uh, I really truly believe that dear ones so with all of that said get this the Holy Spirit has something special amen. in mind amen? amen and I like this part like I told you earlier it's not going to be normal <laughs> it won't be normal because God is not normal uh, you know, Rich, you guys slipped in a little late, and I, I told the people, I said, Jesus was born of a virgin. Now, that's not normal. <laughs> and everything about God is not normal. He, that's not him. He doesn't do normal. <laughs> he does abnormal. He does above normal, super normal, and, uh, and supernatural. So, we're rejoicing just the same. Can you say amen, dear ones? Amen. And those of you out there watching, hey, you could say an amen. Why not? <laughs> yeah, set the stage. God's got good things in store for us. Hallelujah. Well, um, we're really looking forward to what God's got in store. I, I'm so thankful how it worked out that we could have Brother Dale. But, but you know what? 
there's something else we have to do that before we turn to him is we need to worship him with our giving. See, and I know you love it. You live for this moment and you enjoy it and it's part of your heart. And you know what? God's blessing. As I hear the reports, God is helping and blessing people as you give. You can't outgive the Lord, you see? And it's not only part of our worship, but it's part of building the kingdom. So we're going to take a moment. Roxanne, would you play something for us, dear? your feet Lord Jesus in your presence there's fullness what of joy hallelujah yes amen there is nothing there's no one to even compare with you Lord hallelujah I find presence in worshiping you Lord Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come before you today and worship you through giving. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our gifts before you. And we ask you to bless the people, everyone, Lord, today as they've given, even some that, that send they send their gifts because they haven't come back quite yet to church. But you've been so good, and I thank you for their faithfulness, and I ask you to bless them in return. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, <laughs> amen. You know, I told you about the hearing, but I, I didn't mention to you that the other issue, the maybe even bigger one, is this uh, uh, thing where you get this vertigo. Uh, you know, I told Roxanne, I said, I, I never had any LSD, but I heard that it's kind of like this. <laughs> you know, you're just all, uh, couldn't stand up. And so Monday morning, I was so sick that I couldn't. I tried to go into the restroom and stuff, and and I was so sick, I had to start throwing up. I had, fortunately, I had, you know, a basket nearby, and I, and I was throwing up. Roxanne said, honey, what if it's that uh, virus, COVID? She said, we better maybe call the ambulance. I said, as sick as you are, and have you go to the hospital and have them take a look at you. So they came put me in the chair, got me down, <laughs> took me off to the hospital. And uh, then I had to be down. And they ran test after test. They went and stuck my head in that machine, you know, and, and wanted to see if I had a brain. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, I did. <laughs> and uh, so then I had to lay down and take all this medication and stuff and they said no no we can't let you go home now i mean we got to watch you overnight and we got to check you the tomorrow we got to make sure you can handle you know you got to learn to use a watch so they brought me therapists the, you know the next morning and they started talking to me about it and showing me how to how to use one of these uh, and thank goodness we had one. You remember when Roxanne messed up her leg and she was out, and so we, we got it. So we had one handy. That was okay. So at home, you know, here I am, <laughs> turning around and using it, and it's, it's uh, helping me. And 
I'll have to say, I'm gaining on it much quicker than, you know, was said that I would. Um, when you look it up and study it, the level of problem I was having, because I was very serious enough to throw up, they said, you know, that could take a long while, sir, to get that to go away. But then the Lord did another miracle. And he opened the door for me to see a doctor. And the doctor says, well, we can't meet at the, at the hospital or at my office. But he said, how about this? Come to my home. Come to your home? I never heard of that. You know, I said, well, uh, you know, okay. He said, I've got a way. You come around the back of my house, and I've got a little terrace, see, with a little patio covered. And he says, I've got it all set up, so if I have to examine doc the people, I can do it there. So, okay, so we went over there Thursday morning. Boom, boom, you see what I mean? How God speeded steps up, got me in, and uh, boy, he really helped me. He did the exam. He took his little thing in my ears, you know, and all that. And he said, uh, you don't have uh, fluids build up or any of that kind of thing. So that's good news. And uh, he said, we'll get you on the right meds. So he looked at all my medicines, everything. You know, I don't know why I'm taking the time to say this, but it's a testimony in my mind. It's a testimony. I really wanted to just... Give God the praise for these things. And, and, and yet you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know the, the rest of it. But um, God is good. Amen? Amen. And uh, there's nothing he cannot do. And he will take us and help us. So I've just said, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and step out in faith. And I'm going to church. So I got my stuff started getting ready, everything, and uh, and here I am, and I'm thankful for that. But boy, oh boy, you know what a day, what a week. We started out needing Claudio; she was supposed to be here, then couldn't get her. Now we got Pastor Ron; couldn't get him. <laughs> so what do we do next? And the Lord provided. Hallelujah. Man, you might be like the ram in the thicket. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bring us the word and the fulfillment of what God has to say. And, of course, so uh, you're going to do some music, right? Hopefully. Praise the Lord. Because, uh, you know, Brother Dale Strand is one of my longest-term good friends and buddies uh, you know, I was a teenage boy. He was a little ahead of me. He was already married uh, a few years. And um, so I've always looked up to him. And I used to say to myself, you know what? I want to be like him. <laughs> I want to sing like him. I want to speak like him. I'd like to pick the guitar like him. And so he inspired me. See, he's a young person. And we came along and... Uh, then, as you know, I told you the story. Years went by. Hadn't seen him in years, maybe 20 years. But the Lord spoke to me when I took that sabbatical and said, go find those deep wells, see, that you've had in your life, deep wells. And so I made a list. And, I, you know, I took six months off the sabbatical. And that's what I did. I went as God ordered me to the deep wells. And one of them way, way down in the high desert, you know, Palm Springs area, Brother uh, Damer Moses, and other different ones, places. And I thought of Brother Dale, and I said, he's a deep well, <laughs> and I, I need to get hold of him. So I got a hold of him, but this whole thing has been ordered to the Lord because ever since then, you see, we've had this contact and then he became, he came on board uh, as one of the spiritual advisors over Church of the Valley and has been now for many, many years. And so I've used him as a sounding board. 
I've used him as a helper in prayer and intercession. And his wife, wonderful gift, she was an intercessor. And she would help us and she would pray and stand with us. So, you know, God is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> the, the longer I serve him, the better it gets. Amen. And uh, I keep looking forward to more and more good things as the Lord works. Well, with that said, I want to have everybody know and welcome our dear friend, Brother Dale Strand. Hallelujah. just climbed out of the deep well. <laughs> Is that okay now? Is that all right? You know, I love that shofar. She plays that thing like she's been doing it for a long time. I'm going to get me one of those and... Uh, uh, would they have an electric one? <laughs> Maybe we can put some strings on it and whatever. You know, the uh, unique sound of the ram's horn signifies a call to battle. And you know, that's what we're doing here. It's a call to battle against the enemy of our souls. You know, what's happening today is not the beginning of the end. It's the end of the beginning. And things are going on in this world that we never thought would be possible when an entire globe is covered with this situation. And there's so many things and so many ideas and this and that. And today it's this and today, next day it's not that and it's something else. And you wonder... What in the world is going on? Well, I asked God to put a super on my natural. And I think that's what's going to happen today. He's got a word for you. And this has been bubbling in my heart ever since Claudia was here the last time. I don't, that's several months ago when she presented uh, information. We had some books she was uh, had available and everything. And I'm an avid reader. I... Uh, do you folks remember the, uh, the book series that was about the last days uh, left behind? And I discovered that there's 16 books in that series. And I got every single one of them. I'm on book number five now. And it's just come alive in my spirit that we're, we're so close. We're ready. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You know, we have uh, a lot of churches that will leave the Holy Spirit sitting out in the doorstep because they don't welcome him in. And that's one thing about Church of the Valley. We welcome the Holy Spirit in. But there's... A chorus, we, we used to sing, uh, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of glory and grace, thou art welcome in this place. And I met Mike Murdoch when he was a young man way back in the late 70s. And he wrote a song, and I've followed his music. He's one of an incredible songwriter, just amazing. He wrote one, said, Holy Spirit, this is your house. So we let him in where we gather together. But this is a personal thing. In addition to that, you can sit there, and if he's in the building, and you can still ignore him. You cannot invite him into, your, into yourself and say, Lord, not only are you welcome in this place, but you're welcome in this heart. And he said, Holy Spirit, this is your house. You will not be grieved. You will not be quenched. You will not be offended. Because Holy Spirit, 
this is your house. And I think each one of us needs to come to the place where we can say that. Ask God to put a super on your natural and it'll happen where the Holy Spirit will take control and live in you like a, in a way that he never has before. I thought of that chorus. I was singing in the car as I drove down. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Thank God for his goodness. Well, I want you to know, in this day and age when we're not certain what's going to happen tomorrow or this afternoon, we can be sure of a lot of things. You know, God has never seen many things. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. But yet there are several things that God has never seen. I want to tell those to you before I get started here. God never seen a person he couldn't love. God never saw a sinner he couldn't save. God never saw a sickness he couldn't heal. God never found a mountain that he couldn't move. God never found a circumstance that he couldn't change. And most important, God could never find a substitute for his son. And so Jesus, live in us like you never have before. In Jesus' holy, gracious name, the unique sound of the call to battle. Now I'm going to do something a little different here. I went out and bought me a new guitar. <laughs> I, I, gave away, I, I gave away a lot of my old guitars, and my, son, my brother, John, collects guitars. He has 250 guitars. So I figured, who can I give these to? I said, I'll give them to him. <laughs> and so, uh, but he didn't get this one. So I wanted to play nylon. I haven't had one, and uh, I love the sound of the purity of a nylon string guitar. So I'm just getting used to this. There's all kinds of stuff on here that I don't even know what it is. So I'm going to present to you a plan today that I'm going to include a lot of choruses. I told the pastor that I was putting together a listing of choruses that nobody ever sings anymore. You know, the, you know the ones that Larry that we've, we've come up with, and he knows them all. He was over at the house a few months ago with Toby, and uh, we were singing some old choruses. He knew them all, all the words and everything else. And I thought, wow, we haven't sung those things for 50 years. And so I began a list of all these choruses, and I'm on 350 right now. 350 of these words. And my plan is to record them. I'm not sure how that's all going to work. And put them all together and share them with the world. Because they need to hear these things. The things that we grew up on, there's such a powerful message in these things. Yeah. That they need to be sung. Yeah. And they need to be spread. And, uh, and so we're, we're going to... That's kind of my plan. And I don't know how long it's going to take or how it's going to happen. But we'll, the Lord will... We'll make it happen. So I want to talk to you today, this morning, about the blood. The blood is the foundation. Leviticus 17.11. I've got something here also I want to give you later on in the service, each of you. But Leviticus 17. Let's see. Somebody said they pronounced it Levi Cutus. And I said, I think it's Leviticus. So, so Levi cut, I mean Leviticus in the 17th chapter in the 11th verse, you're familiar with it. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And he says, I have given it you to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. 
For it is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul. And somehow this message has gotten lost in the process of ministry throughout the whole country and the world even. I've begun when, uh, when Claudia was here and presented that she talked about that blood. I began at that time, it's been uh, many months ago, to do personal communion every day. You know, and it doesn't matter what you use. I use uh, a bottle of grape juice or cranberry juice or whatever it happens to be. And as far as bread, I use walnuts. I said, what do you use walnuts for, com for, for communion? What, are you a heretic or what? <laughs> but I take that walnut and this do in remembrance of me. Jesus yeah. took it. He blessed it. He broke it, he gave it, and then he partook of that bread that we remember. And in the process, each morning I see him on that cross. I see that blood running down his cheeks from the thorns in his brow and in his crown of his head. I see the spikes sticking out of his hands with that blood trickling down his arms. I see where his slide was slashed and that blood ran down the side of his body and saw those precious feet that Mary wiped her hair with it as her tears as she kissed his feet and she poured ointment upon those precious feet. And I see that blood and say, Lord, I'm doing this in remembrance of you. I never want to forget. I never want to forget. And so I've begun that communion process and then take the bread and don't be telling somebody in the church and we'll start using walnuts. That's just me. That's what I had available. If there's bread, I'll take that. But I take the bread and incorporate that with cleansing as we remember, this is the cup of my New Testament, and as I partake, the cleansing, the healing, yeah. the redemption, the restoration, yeah. the intercession, as the Holy Spirit speaks through us yeah. directly to the throne, the supply, the submission, and the transformation. If you caught that, that spells Christ. Cleansing, healing, restoration, intercession, supply, and transformation. And receive that. And it's like lightning bolt fell through my entire body from the tip of my head to the bottom of my feet as I remember what he's done. And I don't know what it is, but I, I've never been a crier but I found myself crying all the time. I listen to Jimmy Swaggart a lot because I love the music that they have, incredible musicians and singers. And, and I just find myself weeping. I says, hey, this isn't like me. He says, I'm putting a super on your natural. And that begins to take place and change and renew and dig down deep in the areas that maybe haven't, I wasn't aware of. These are things to repent of. These are things to change. These are things that need to be renewed in you and through you. And so it's the blood. And Exodus 12, 13 says, when I, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. God was going to destroy Egypt. And that would include everybody. And God said, no, you take the blood. Put it over the lentils of your doorpost. And when I see the blood... I'll pass over you. And we need to take that and use it today. And I have prepared a, uh, you've seen these little uh, tags in the back of your shirt and it'll say made in here or made there or whatever they put on it, the size or whatever it is. And I have these little labels printed and 
this, this is a, a, a thrill to me because I don't know why I even did it. And I, I said, well, Lord, you must have a plan for it. And I think today is the plan because I wondered why I ordered a 50 because that was uh, all I had as far as the minimum amount. This is a little piece of cloth and it's engraved with a cross and it says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Hallelujah. I have one of these in my wallet. I have one of these on my car. And wherever I go, that goes with me. And I use it as a prayer that, Lord, as I go through this, as I'm on that freeway, as this car is going 65 miles an hour, remember this, Lord, when I see the blood, you're going to pass over me and you're going to protect. You're going to renew. You're going to do all these things that need to be done. And I want you guys to have as many as you'd like. You'd like take several. Put one in your wallet. Put one in your car if you want to take a couple others and give to somebody else. Uh, we're going to make those available. And I'm going to just put this down here because you can help yourself. Leave a few because I'm passing them out as well to others. But take those with you and it will, you'll discover. The blood will come alive. And what God, the power behind the blood. And that's the title of this message. There's power in the blood. Yeah. Revelation 12, 17. They overcame him. How? They overcame the enemy by? The blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb and? The word of their testimony. That's exactly. And? They love not their lives. That's right. They love not their lives until the death. But the power is in the blood. When we go to the doctor, what do they do? They take some labs. And they can tell everything about you, if they've never seen you before, about what's going on in your body Amen. with the blood test. It's truly amazing. I went in uh, recently for a, a test. And uh, the doctor said, oh, you're uh, one point under where it should be. You need some more iron. <laughs> so I started pumping iron. I thought, no, not that kind of iron. <laughs> so I found me a little iron pill. I mean, it's, but it's amazing how the blood reveals all about you. And when you stand before the Lord, your blood, which he can see, because he made it, that's the life of the flesh, he can see into that and see where you are. There's nothing you can hide from him. There's nothing that his eyes cannot see. Amen. And he knows where you are, what you're doing, what your thoughts are, what the intents of your heart is. All these things, it's incredible. Yeah. Because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, a favorite verses of mine. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. We all face strongholds. This will pull them down. We're not messing with, with uh, uh, carnality. We take the weapons that the Lord has provided us. And we cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of the Lord God. And boy, if that isn't something that you w will t turn you around, will make you comprehend what God has in store for you when you obey Him in Jesus' name. And so, I put together some choruses about the blood because it's so powerful to me. And I want to share them with you. And I'm not sure how this will work, but we'll give it a try here. I've got knobs on here. I don't even know what they do. Let's see here. So I want to go over some of those songs, and then we'll discuss the power in each of those special choruses. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. You want power in the Spirit? There's power in the blood. You started off in the morning with that personal communion. 
You recognize, praise, thank, and glorify God in the process, and he will do new things in you, to you, and out of you, through you, and others will be blessed because of it. Amen. You know, you can see somebody and you tell whether they're happy or sad or uh, whatever, you know, just by the look on their face. But somehow there's a glorious look that the, the, the uh, uh, fragrance of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And it shows in your face. It's like a glow when, when uh, Moses came down from the mountain and they saw that his face was glowing. And that's what happens when you honor the blood. Yes. And then there's this one. Let's see, where am I? Under the blood, the precious blood. Under the cleansing, healing flood, keep me, Savior, from day to day. Under the precious blood. When the blood becomes precious to you, things will begin to happen in your life that you never th knew possible. And then there's... Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. It cleanses. It renews you. It brings you out in a new place before the Lord where you don't have to uh, brush the dust off the Bible anymore because it's there, there in front of you and you're using it every day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And then what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains want to lose your guilty stains the place to do it is the blood redeemed how I love to proclaim it redeemed by the blood of the lamb redeemed through his infinite mercy his child and forever I am redeemed By the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeems his child, and forever I am. Hallelujah. And then there is. When I see the blood, oh, yeah. 
When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. There's that label, and you take those with you. I'm, I'm going to hear testimonies about that next time I come by here. Because it really, God, is, it's like saying, Lord, I've ignored this for too long. Now I'm acknowledging it. I'm acknowledging you, the blood you spilt on Calvary, just for me. And Lord, when you see that blood, you're going to pass over in Jesus' name. And then there is, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah! You ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. I used to sing this in Youth for Christ in Santa Barbara, California when I was in high school. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. There underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary as far removed as darkness is from dawn in the sea of God's forgetfulness it's good enough for me praise God my sins are gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there is My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly lean on Jesus' name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't borrow or it's sunshine for it's skies may is that me return to gray I don't worry for the future for I know what Jesus said and today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead now this next verse is the one that I should have started with I don't know about tomorrow it may bring me poverty but the one who leads the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood, and his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Well, many things 
things about tomorrow I don't see to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know Holds my hand, hallelujah. And one final song. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace, wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory be to God. We're talking about the blood. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Oh, I love those songs. We're talking about putting the super on our natural. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be to the Lord God. The blood covenant happened at the cross. Once for all, no more animal sacrifices. Can you imagine? They went once a year. Go see the priest. Find him. Sacrifice an animal. And your sins will be forgiven. We get up in the morning and or go to bed at night and say, Lord, I failed you. And we have immediate forgiveness, renewal, when we confess our sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh. But oh Lord, you don't know what I've done. I've talked to many people who've said that. Yeah. Well, I want you to know, my friend, that his grace is far beyond whatever you could ever do. Yeah. And it's for you when you come before him. Right. In Jesus' name. The blood covenant. When we take that little tag, and it's not the tag, it's the the message on your brain. And did you doubt, by the way, that uh, they would have found a brain when you did <laughs> on the machine? Because <laughs> I took one of those one time, and I thought, well, is there, is there anything up there, you know? <laughs> Actually, my wife said that. No. <laughs> but anyhow, we're talking about no more going through all that rigmarole and that old covenant because we have the new covenant the new testament of my blood hallelujah and you know what we're talking about we're talking about cleansing we're talking about healing we're talking about renewal and restoration we're talking about salvation we're talking about protection wherever you go we're talking about provision when that bank account is drained and you don't know what you're going to do and where it's going to come from he provides. He's the great provider. We're talking about His presence. How long has it been since you've basked in the presence of the Most High God? How long has it been since you've knelt before Him and said, Lord, I just want to praise You. I just want to give You glory. I just want to lift You up and magnify Your name. In Jesus' name, the blood makes that happen. And so it happens with not only His presence, but His Holy Spirit in filling. Mm -hmm. A lot of people argue about that, and, and I, I pray for them. John MacArthur's one. I read a lot of his books. And of course, he uh, wrote a book called Strange Fire, where he denies the, uh, the spiritual gift of, of uh, speaking in a spiritual language. 
And I said, I pray, Lord, God, fill him with the Holy Ghost, and he won't, uh, <laughs> he's going to find out what it's all about in Jesus' name. He's a wonderful preacher. He knows the Word well, but he needs to be straightened out in a few things, and maybe I'm the one to have him do it, you know. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' holy, precious name. We're talking about overcoming. Difficult things. He can smash through those mountains. He can go through go through the difficult times but is there something there that you can't overcome and it seems you fail and fail and fail again well pastor said his mercies are new every morning so no matter what you've done all day long you wake up and that mercy is brand new ready for you and it's got your name on it he said I want to put a super on there natural here he's forgiven he's cleansed he's renewed he's changed it's not going to happen again because he's depending on me and along with that comes the guidance Lord which direction do I take come to the Y in the road which one do I go the narrow or the wide that's easy everybody's going down that wide road but the narrow road there may be some rocks along the way there may be some uh, snakes. There may be some scorpions. There may be some things there that you don't want to deal with. But that's why we let him deal with them in Jesus' name. He gives direction. He gives victory. He gives anointing. And most of all, he gives transformation. Because when you're transformed, you're renewed to the point where you're not bothered by these other things anymore. Because you run to the master. You run to him right away and say, here I am again, Lord. And he says, I'm ready with my mercy. It's new every morning just for you in Jesus' name. Genesis 4.10, God said to Cain, who killed his brother Abel, Where are you? And Cain says, Am I my brother's, brother's or where's your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? You know, you've learned that verse in there. And Jesus said, God said, the blood of your brother mm -hmm. cries out to me from the ground. Yes. The blood speaks. And it spoke in this particular instance of revelation. What was going on in Cain that he didn't want anybody to know about. But the blood spoke. Mm -hmm. And the blood, when you have it on you, when you have it through the communion, and again, the communion is no magic uh, uh, formula. Yeah. It's the acknowledgement in your mind, in your spirit, and in your heart uh -huh. that I remember, Lord, and I'm never going to forget what you've done for me. And let that blood that flowed through you flow in me. In Jesus' name, I pray. And so today, the blood of Jesus cries out to you. He cries out and says, You're redeemed! You need to do things that we expect of a person who's redeemed. He says, you're justified. I've handled that too. And don't you forget that you're justified. You've been cleansed and you're clean. Reminds me of the ten lepers. Came to Jesus and, oh Lord, we can all, if we could be healed. He says, go to the priest and on your way you're going to be healed. Yeah. Only one came back. He found Jesus, fell at his feet, and said, Lord, I worship you. You've healed me. What did Jesus say? He says, where's the other nine? Yeah. Where, where are all these people that, you know, a, a leprosy was the, probably the worst thing that you could experience in those old days. Yeah. They would have to, you talk about social distancing. They had to call out, unclean, unclean, if anybody came near and they're around them. And they had to probably stay, you know, 10 feet away. And you had to admit, I'm unclean. Don't come any farther. I wonder if we could do that with the COT, <laughs> COVID. I got COVID. Stay away. But then Jesus changed it completely and says, and I'm sure he thought this, how is it possible that I gave forth my healing and they didn't even care enough to come back not that I want to be thanked but I just want them to be aware that the power in my body in my blood to cleanse and heal them where are the other nine 
I guess they never came back. But that happens today too. People will get something from the Lord <clears throat> that they've asked for and prayed for. And then once they get it and say, okay, that's it. Now I can go back to what I used to be. <clears throat> Doesn't happen that way, folks. But Jesus' blood <clears throat> cries out from the ground. And he says, you're washed in the blood. He cries out to you today, the blood of Jesus, that you have my peace. Not as the world gives, give I unto you, but my divine peace. You have victory in Jesus. Yes. You have, you can cry out. This is one of my favorite songs that the Brooklyn Tabernacle sings. I don't know if you've heard them. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Yes. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Yes. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And he, Jesus, will give me the victory. Right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But that's the blood, the power of the blood. Yes. But you know, <clears throat> the one thing we can't forget <clears throat> is that use of the blood covenant and the covering of the blood is conditional. God is always loving. He doesn't ever change that. His grace is always there and His mercy is new every, every morning as we spoke of. But still, the blood covenant is for those that are intimate with the Lord. It won't work if you're out of relationship with Jesus because you have to deal with those areas that keep you from Him first before He's going to allow the power of the blood to work in and through you. Uh -huh. It won't work if you're unrepentant, if you think you don't need repenting because that separates you from God. So many scriptures throughout Proverbs and, and many other areas in the Bible say that uh, the, the Lord won't hear us if we regard iniquity in our heart. And it separates us from Him. It won't work if you're disobedient. If He's told you to do something and you neglect. When Pastor Mike called last night, I, I, I hesitated, but I didn't say maybe not. I said, Lord, this is an opportunity that you designed, and I don't understand why. And I, usually when I prepare a sermon, I'll spend at least one or two weeks. Yes. You know, you know how that goes, Pastor. Oh, yes. But if we disobey, it won't work for you. No. Because you can never come to the place you cannot go any further than your last disobedience. If you try, you say, well, I don't want to obey that, but I'll obey over here. No, that doesn't work. Because you're still trying to deal with that one that you didn't want to deal with. That's right. And so it's important that the blood covenant, if you're unforgiving, it's not going to work. Amen. Yes. If you're not in the word daily, it's not going to work. And the reason for being in the Word daily is that keeps you up to date with what's going on. Mm. And I uh, worked for uh, the Diamond Center for several years. And uh, mm -hmm. Paul, the Diamond Center, <laughs> he called me the other day. Mm -hmm. And uh, his wife is uh, not doing well at all and uh, had a chance to minister to him again. But what I did when I first went to work for him as his assistant, I went into his computer, and every morning when he turned it on, a scripture would pop up, mm -hmm. in big, bold letters and type. Mm -hmm. And he, he mentioned that. He says, man, you really ministered to me when you put that scripture. I didn't know what. In fact, I hurried, hurried to work so I could find out what was... Uh, the Lord was saying. <clears throat> Dealt with him about his soul. <clears throat> he came to a Benny Hinn meeting in Oakland at one of the, the Coliseum there, I believe it was. Sat on the front row. And we were singing those choruses. 
And he was raising his hands in praise. And I thought, Lord, how you work in such amazing ways if we just obey. Yeah. It wasn't my idea to do that. The Lord dropped that in my heart. Put that on his computer. Yeah. yeah. So even this, as he called uh, a couple of weeks ago, I bombarded his email with, here's how to stay right with God, even through difficult circumstances. And he called me and says, you know, you, you gave me so much there, I don't know if I can get through it all, but keep it coming, because that's helping me. But God works that way, unique ways, puts a super on your natural. When you just, well, Lord, what can I do? Well, just acknowledge him. Just get before him. Just be obedient to him. Just stay repented up. And you know, it all comes down to this Second Chronicles 7.14, which you know. Amen. If my people, that's you, me, you're called by my name. He's called us. Well, humble yourselves. Yeah. Well, I won the humility trophy. You know, I figured I was humble. You know? <laughs> That's what some, some, some people maybe think that way, you know. Oh, yeah. Humble yourselves and pray. How long has it been since you really prayed? You know, you're, is, are there scars on your knees because you knelt so much before the Lord? Turn from their wicked ways. Then, when you've done all that, those conditions, then I'll hear from heaven. My ear will be tuned to hear whatever you're saying. And I'll forgive your sin. And I'll hear your land. Now your land, we think in terms of property, but I see it beyond that. Your land is where you are standing right now. I'll heal what needs to be healed around you, in you, through you. When you're testifying to somebody, you know, and that's one thing in these choruses, they're, they're perfect for testimony. You're talking to someone and you start singing a little bit, when I see the blood, what are you talking about? Oh, let me tell you the story about the blood. And all of a sudden it opens a door and they say, well, I, I don't know about that. But God can work just through that little, little bit and cause them to come to the Lord Jesus. Let's stand in prayer. Praise God. To all you folks out there in the internet world, and this goes everywhere because YouTube is everywhere, yeah. and I think there's someone out there, you and you and you and you, that needed to hear this message. But I tell you, the power of the blood was meant for you. If you're not saved, then I want to just say right now, if you'll follow me as I say this, you can invite the Lord to become Lord of your life. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I've confessed my sins. Forgive me, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to make you Lord of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. If you did that little prayer, you're born again. And you're going to find yourself a church that believes in the Bible and the truths of Scripture and the power of the blood. And you're going to find yourself changed, renewed, cleansed, beyond what you ever thought possible because God will put a super on your natural. Yes. And not anymore will you be faced with difficult situations where you have to question whether you should obey or not obey, whether you should uh, repent or not repent, if you should forgive or not forgive, because it'll be automatic, because that conscience speaks to your heart. Some people, that conscience is seared with a hot iron, but with those with a good conscience, the Lord speaks to us through His voice, through His mighty Word. That's why we gotta stay in the Word. He could be speaking to you and you're ignoring him. That's like somebody knocking at your door and you won't answer it. And so they leave. Yeah. So God's trying to speak to you through his word and you don't get in it so you can't hear what he had to say because you ignored him. That's why you've got to get in the book. You've got to get in the word. Glory be to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. You. It's all sufficient, Lord, for us. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your goodness and the teaching on the blood, Lord. We would ask you to, uh, uh, it, 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 to cause us to be immersed, Lord, in your spirit, in your presence, and in your blood. As you see that, yes. you will pass over us, Lord, and provide the protection 
the, the renewal and all those things that we require in Jesus' holy, precious name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Wasn't that a great word? You know, uh, you may be seated, but I wanted to say this as we conclude. Another theme the Holy Spirit has put in my heart to encourage all of you in is love. Love, love, love. See, we're in a time where a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are in dismay. A lot of people are feeling like, what's going to happen? How long will this go? And right now we have the, the love of God to give to people. So your word today couldn't be more applicable to the specialness of the love of God. I mean, Jesus said, no greater gift is there than to lay down your life, you see, for a friend. And Jesus went to the cross. That was his commission. That was his purpose and his shed blood. That's why we celebrate through communion. See, a remembrance of the love of of God. So the love of God was poured out on the cross through Jesus and so special. You know, I've had a chance because of being down to have to spend some more extra time meditating, praying, searching the word, uh, watching good Christian programming. I'm telling you, boy, God is stepping things up. Some of this uh, that we're seeing now on the Christian televisions, the news that they're talking about, so fantastic. So it's, um, it's a glorious time, dear ones. And no, no, we're not going back to normal, as they think, you know. No, no, we've got a new normal. It's the Lord, and see, he's never been normal He's never been normal. <laughs> and so we have to understand the new normal. The new normal is what we heard from uh, Brother Dale today. The new normal is to walk in the principles, to look to where God is and how he's at work. And he's a 24-7, around the clock, never stops and so we've got so much to be thankful for. Boy, am I so glad to look back and see Mary and Richard Subia. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I'm so overjoyed because it's, it's really miraculous that the Lord's allowed them to be here because of the issues. But in spite of, you see what I mean? In spite of these uh, confrontations, enemy fighting, you know, uh, challenging us. They are just rising up. I got to say this. They're both different people now than the people I met years ago. First time I met them, their daughter was getting married and they needed someone. So they came to me and I worked around and did this service but I could tell Richard, he was a nice guy, but he, he didn't know much. <laughs> he didn't know much about spiritual things. And uh, yet he had a hunger. I could see that. And then to watch over these years, and I mean, it's been quite a few years, probably 25 years, something like that, maybe even longer. I think it was longer. And uh, so... They've grown and grown and grown. And, and Mary was picking up and growing. And uh, at first, you know, Rich was leading, kind of 
taking the lead, and God was using me to be a, a friend with him, see. But, and he started coming to the prayer meetings for the men. And God filled him with the Holy Spirit in one of the prayer meetings for the men. <laughs> and then he wanted to do more service, and he, he became a deacon. So he's one of our two deacons. <laughs> we have David Price, and we have Rich Subia. And, uh, man, those guys have a heart for service. So God bless you. It was such a joy to see you here. And those of you watching that know them and you know about the situation, not able to be here today, praise God. Rejoice with us over it. And uh, the other thing is, as we're closing, please remember uh, Gloria Galtman and all of the family. I have to say, the, see, Mama Landeros, uh, little Georgia, uh, she's home now. And her husband, Julian, he's waiting up there. He's been waiting for her. I have to tell you this. On their 70th anniversary, I mean, she's 106 years old now. But on their 70th anniversary, they invited me and Roxanne. We went over to the restaurant. Really nice setup they had. And they had a private room and everything. And they were dancing and stuff. And Julian, he's still in a, a wheelchair, and he says, I want to dance. And they said, you do? How, ma? How can that be? He said, well, just take my wheelchair out there and, and, let me, let me, and help me dance. <laughs> so we did. And I, I watched in amazement because he loved to dance. And I couldn't help but think today. You know what? Him and Georgia are probably dancing today. <laughs> There's some excitement going on in heaven. Praise the Lord. And no wheelchairs are needed anymore. Praise the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Listen, dear ones, what we have is so deep. What we have is so awesome. I mean, there's nothing like it. It, it's so awesome and so special. And the blood of Jesus, you see, the love of God poured forth. So, please, that is the message. Tell the people about love. They're hurting. They're hurting out there. And they need love. And so, as you can talk to them about love... And I've been hearing reports about the evangelism that's going out. Brother Scott, how you went. And how the people are receptive, you see. They're open. Why? Because they're hurting right now. And they need love. And the blood of Jesus was shed for them. And remind them. Talk to them about that. And I want to encourage you to do this. Get bold. And tell them, listen. Listen. God loves you. And, and I want to pray with you. Would you let me pray with you about the love of God coming in your heart? And they may be ready to accept him as Savior on the spot, or they may be hurting and need some love. So love on them. <laughs> Would you do that? I want you to love on them like Jesus wants us to show his love. Praise God. Well, I guess it's time. It slipped away from us again. But boy, I'll tell you, haven't you enjoyed what we heard today from Brother Dale Strand? Man. He is a deep well. He's a deep well. You know, he says more in a short phrase than some say in a whole sermon. <laughs> and uh, loaded, boy, full of the word. You know, he's got so much of the word in him. He's, over the years, he's amazed me at how he memorizes the word and, and so many things that God has given him tools to know how to minister. And uh, I really enjoyed hearing you play that little new guitar. That's cool. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, how, how do you go from here, church?
That's where we go. So as we leave today, we're leaving up, uplifted, encouraged. That's why I like the name of that church that guys set up, you know, the evil, what do they call it? Elevation. Yeah, elevation. <laughs> elevation. So that's what God's doing. So, well, with that in mind, stand. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing to do. We'll elevate it right now. Oh, and don't forget um, these. They're, they're like little uh, things you can, and you can just slip it in your wallet or something. He already gave me one. So pick one up and maybe pick another extra one up if you know somebody to give it to because it'd be a good way to. Remember, I told you, let's love on people. Let's pray. Father in heaven. We thank you so much for this day, the day you have made. It's been a great day, and we thank you, Lord, for all you're doing. Thank you for the touch you've given uh, Rich and Mary to be here. Thank you for the touch you've given me. I didn't know I'd be here, but you've done it. You've helped me. And thank you, Lord, for sending Brother Dale to us today. Pray special blessing on him for the extra that he's put in, uh, the extra mile. He